Hey, what's up everybody? Fred Minnick here, and today I am going to taste and review this here, a Michter's Barrel Strength Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Now, this is coming in at uh, a whopping 110.4 proof. Uh, the price point on this, as I recall, is... Wait, 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 wait. Let me not get anything wrong. The price point on this is $110. Um, a few things about the Michter's rye that is going to be different than a lot of other ryes is their barrel entry proof. So they go into the barrel entry, uh, their barrel entry at 103 proof, whereas the industry standard is 125. Now, this is the part where I get all geeky and people who just want to see me taste are like, Oh my God, why won't he shut up and just review the damn whiskey? If that's you, I have no issues with that whatsoever. I've got a, uh, a timestamp in the description where my tasting begins and you won't have to hear me or suffer through this geeky stuff. So for those who stood by and want to listen to a little bit of geeky stuff, I'm going to go on a little discussion about barrel entry proof because Michter's is the lowest uh, barrel entry proof in the category. So they go in at 103. Now the industry standard is 125. That's actually the legal standard that changed in 1962. In 1962, uh, the industry changed or lobbied the federal government to change the, uh, the, the barrel entry proof maximum from 110 to 125. Now, why would they do that, you might ask? Well, one, they felt like they could uh, lower their tax burden, but I think the greatest reason why was they could create more volume and thereby uh, more bottles. This was also at a time that the industry was starting to put out some 86 proof bourbon instead of just 100 proof. Uh, the industry standard was bottled and bond. You had a little bit of 90 proof action here and there. One of the notable new brands at 90 proof was Maker's Mark at that time. But there were more people going to that 86 proof route, especially national distillers and Seagram's was kind of tinkering with it as well. And if they could, if they could go into the barrel at 125, then they could basically decrease the amount of barrels per, per volume. It's very costly to go in at a lower entry proof. Uh, the reason why is you don't get as much volume, and especially if you're cutting it. Um, so let's put it this way. So if you get, if you have one barrel, if you, so, so if you have one barrel that the barrel entry proof was 110, and one barrel that the uh, barrel entry was 125, and it had about 25% uh, angel share taken out of it, and so you have 75% of a barrel left. And of that 75% of the barrel left, let's just say the, the proof maintained at 110 and 125. And your goal is to create 80 proof product. Well, that 125 proof product barrel will be able to create more 80 proof bottles than the 110 uh, proof barrel because there's more, there's going to be more volume that they can dilute. So the more water they add, the more volume that they'll be able to get than over here at this one. It can sound complicated, um, but it's it's really not. It's just, it's, it's a volume game. The higher you go up, more volume you get. From a quality perspective, however, water makes it more soluble. So, so barrel entry proof essentially is like, when it comes off the still, the whiskey comes off the still, they, they cut it with uh, water, with proofing water and they will then put it in the barrel. And the lower they go, um, the better it interacts with the wood over time. It's as simple as, as this, really. Uh, the more water you add to the, for the barrel entry proof, uh, the more you're able to release a lot of the phenolic, phenolic compounds that you do not want in the whiskey. So like the over oak, those high tannins, uh, those basically get breathe out. Uh, so as oxygen comes in, it's processed out more uh, easily. And so if it if you have a high barrel entry proof, it kind of makes it can make it really astringent. That being said, there's a lot of great whiskey out there that's 125 proof. You know, really all whiskeys equal. Barrel
barrel answer proof, in my opinion, until about eight years old. After eight years old, the clock is starting to tick on some of those astringent compounds, some of those tannin notes that I don't like and others don't like. Really old school, old school whiskey fans, I kind of fall in that line. I'm more of a traditionalist and I don't like over oak notes. And uh, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. It's all, there's a whole market for it. Pappy Van Winkle, 23 year old, exists for a reason. People like that flavor profile. So um, my, my point is the old school standard is after eight years old, you have to watch the whiskey a little closer to make sure it doesn't become over oak. But anyway, so that's just a little little discussion on uh, barrel entry proofs. I will put a link to an article I wrote um, in the description if you would like to learn more. So now, how about I taste this whiskey? And for those of you who just joined me for the tasting, welcome back. Those who stuck around for the geeky stuff, thanks for listening. And of course, as always, if you're not a subscriber, please become one, click subscribe. Tell a friend about the channel. Uh, we just hit 60,000 subscribers. Thank you. I know uh, this is not the only thing I do. I write books and I do a lot of events. Uh, I wish I could do more on YouTube, but I do hope to uh, reach my goal of 100,000 one day. So let's hope we can get there. So you know, I got my I got a Bourbon Pursuit glass here. I hope you're listening to Bourbon Pursuit as well. It's one of the one of my endeavors that I do with Kenny and Ryan. Okay. Woo! Oh, man. 2024 may be the year of rye. This is now like the fifth rye that I have smelled that I'm just like, oh my God, this smells amazing. There's a lot of great rye whiskey right now. Okay. So this smells incredibly sweet, right? So the quintessential notes for rye are typically like spice and herbal notes. And you're, when you smell sweet, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, don't normally get that sweet of a smell in a, in a rye, but this is really maple syrupy. Uh, you know, I'll, there is some like rye bread in here, but that's kind of like almost cheating to say I smell rye bread coming out of the oven. I mean, it's rye whiskey for God's sake. If I can't, but that's what I smell. Can't lie to you. I smell rye bread. Oh my God. This is spectacular. And of course, this is, um, oof. wow. I was, I was looking on the back for the proof, the proof's on the front, 110. Uh, it is 110.4 proof and it feels like velvet on the tongue. Just feels like pure velvet. Absolutely. Undeniably just really rich and buttery on the palate. It's really concentrated on the back of my palate and everybody's tongue is different with, with where you feel things. Um, I personally feel spice in the back and I feel a lot, a lot of spice. So that commentary that I made at the top of like, you know, I don't really smell sweet in a rye like this. I'm not tasting the sweet. I, I do taste it, the traditional rye notes and this is like very peppery. Now it's, um, I'll, um, this has like a hatch chili note. This has some black pepper, some jalapeno. I'll add like a cinnamon bread to it. Um, you know, we get this cinnamon raisin bread from Costco that I swear is an instant five pounds. Go straight to my hips, guarantee it. You know, like, you know, when, I, when I'm rolling or I'm working out, I'm like sweating. I'm like, yep, there goes that slice of uh, cinnamon raisin bread I just had. 
and it's just leaving my hips. Yeah. But in my defense, I do have my mama's hips. That being said, cinnamon, raisin bread, maybe a little icing here. There is some sweetness, but it's not, it's not over the top. It, this is very spicy. And the finish is incredibly long. I'm, it's still on my palate. It's still on my palate. It's still going. This is a, this is stunning, absolutely stunning whiskey. Um, yeah, incredible. Damn, that's good. Well, like I said, 2024 may be the year of rye whiskey. This is now like um, the fourth or fifth rye I've had that I think will be shoe-ins for my top 100. This is delicious. Can't wait to put it in a blind tasting and see how it does. But my God, the best stuff I've tasted all year round has been rye. It's been rye. Uh, Club Marzipan, I've been reviewing a lot of ryes over there. And um, if you're a bourbon fan and you can't get into rye, Man, I feel bad for you. <laughs> I feel bad for people who cannot get into rye whiskey. I, I, it, it, some people have a, have like a branding hurdle. Like, no, I can't leave my Kentucky bourbon. I gotta stay with the horsey on my Blantons. I can't leave it. Uh, I, I feel bad for you. I really do. Because if you're stuck in that world and you're never willing to give rye a shot, you are just missing out on some incredible whiskey because uh, rye is coming online and it's here and it is so freaking good. Oh my God, this is so good. I'm gonna have another one. Hmm. That's gonna do it for this little tasting. I might finish this whole bottle. Kidding, maybe, not really. But yeah, be safe out there y'all. And remember, vodka sucks. Cheers.